Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So I'm back in my outside room here. And um, I have recently read, in fact today read, an article by Bob Brooks, a friend of mine up in the north, uh, runs a series of schools under the name of Hotspur School of Defence. And um, he is the current president of the British Federation of Historical Swordplay and has been doing HEMA for many, many years, since the mid-90s, I believe. And um, it's a good article and it's well worth reading. I'm going to post the link right below this video, so if you're interested enough, you can go and read it. And I do recommend it if you either do HEMA or have an interest in getting involved with HEMA or just you're just generally interested in it. Um, now, I don't 100% agree with everything Bob writes, but I probably agree with sort of 90, 95% of, of what he writes. And uh, most of it is um, I completely agree with and is very well worth reading. And it comes down to the point of full contact or full force combat. Well, um, this is something like Bob that I've had to uh, deal with um, inquiries from all sorts, from TV and students to people doing other hobbies, reenactors, whatever, um, uh, asking about HEMA and wanting to learn about HEMA, um, and also in some ways disparaging HEMA. Uh, in some cases, people saying that we don't fight full force, and other people who say that we fight at too much force, and all sorts of um, uh, <laughs> degrees along the spectrum. But essentially, I want to talk about the, just like Bob does in his article, talk about the subject of full force. What is full force in the context of swordsmanship? Let's just break this down into separate elements. So, first of all, if we're um, training to fight for real, full force, so if we're actually, imagine I'm going to have a real fight with a real longsword. How much force do you think it takes to wound someone with a longsword? Very often in a real fight, what you don't want to do is go, I'm going to hit you with as much power as I possibly can, which means winding my body and my foot and everything else into it, and then whipping the blade through. In fencing terms, that's bad. Okay. Generally speaking, when we hit someone in fencing, we want to hit them with force, with enough force to wound, okay? but also we want the, the weapon to be coming out in front of us, usually before the body advances. Okay? This is a basic principle of, uh, of fencing, is that you want the weapon to uh, move first most of the time. Um, there are exceptions to that, but that's the general rule. Um, if I wanted to hit a stick, let's say a stick that's buried in the ground and I want to stand the best chance of breaking this and I've mentioned this topic before in application to test cutting and a lot of the test cut cutting videos that have me pulling my hair out or I would be pulling my hair out if I had hair um, and this is where people go, oh I'm going to cut this uh, massive tatami mat or I'm going to cut this water bottle or I'm going to cut this piece of wood or whatever uh, and I'm going to wind up, whoa, and just turn the body in, maybe, I don't know, maybe how a baseball player would, or maybe how some people might swing an axe, and I'm going to twist the whole body in, whoa, before the weapon comes out. You would have been skewered by that point, okay? The, one of the problems of doing this, all of this movement, is first of all, it tells your opponent exactly what you're doing before the weapon is presenting any kind of real threat to them, but equally it means you're moving into distance before the weapon's in front of you. So it's very, very important, actually, that it's more important to hit a person, this is the headline, it's more important to hit a person and not be hit than necessarily to hit them 20% harder than you could have done the other way. Okay? So the first point for me is that in fencing, the most important thing is to hit and not be hit. The power of the hit is, it's not irrelevant, but it's way down the list of priorities. Okay? And very often in fencing, the most powerful hit you can give is not the hit that you want to give because you will either get hit in the same time or you'll get hit before, you, before your hit gets to come to its natural conclusion. Okay? So hitting quickly and hitting without being hit are far more important than hitting hard. The next thing is wounding with a sharp weapon. We are not training to fight with sticks or fists or feet. We are training for sharp swords. A sharp sword, like any of these, does not require a lot of force to do a huge amount of injury to an opponent. Okay? 
With cuts, cuts do in general require a little bit more uh, muscle and a little bit more speed in the weapon than a thrust does. A thrust can literally, with a sharp point, be pushed into a person's body slowly and go through them. Okay? A cut, generally speaking, can't do that. There are basically three main ways of cutting. There's either where the blade is laid onto the target and pulled, which is a draw cut, where the blade is laid onto the target and pushed, that's a push cut. Both of these would come under the German definition of a Schnitt, I believe. And then there is the normal, what most people do most of the time, 99% of the time, essentially a hit, which has an element of either pull or push in it, even if you try not to have. And in fact, there are sword tricks where you specifically don't do the push or pull, and where you have a lemon on the hand, for example, and you cut through the lemon and it doesn't cut the hand. That's simply because you're doing it completely perpendicular and there's no push involved and no pull involved. Okay? But, generally speaking, the most common type of cleave or cut or hack with a sword has an element of the sword moving yeah, at, uh, compared to the point of contact. And usually there is a point of push or a pull involved in this inevitably. Because of the arc of the sword, because of the movement of my arms, because of the movement of the person that I'm hitting, all sorts of things. Okay? So, a normal cut will involve this. Yeah? Now, if this is a sharp sword, rather than a blunt fetish that I'm using here, if this is a blunt sword and I hit someone this hard, okay, that is enough force. I know from test cutting various materials, including bits of dead animal, I, and you can watch videos of people chopping up dead pigs and dead sheep and all sorts on YouTube. I don't need to give you a link because it's very easy to find. Um, and you will see that this kind of force blow, and notice I'm taking no step here, this is simply coming really from the push and the pull of my hands on the hilt of the weapon. I'm not putting an enormous amount of um, strength or any kind of force really into this. This is just a natural kind of blow of the kind of force that we would get in most sparring in HEMA today. And that is enough force to chop through most of a person's forearm, um, to remove half a person's hand, to chop off fingers easily, to open up halfway through someone's neck, uh, to open up a cavity into someone's torso, to chop the thigh muscles completely down to the bone, to the thigh bone. It's that kind of force, okay? So, as a rough estimation, you can expect to chop through about that much meat and some bone uh, with that much force with a sharp longsword, assuming that you hit with good edge alignment and you hit at the centre of percussion or somewhere around a region from about there down to about there. Okay? So, assuming I hit the person in the correct place with the correct edge alignment, that is enough force to cut through a fair amount of meat and certainly enough meat to result in their death, incapacitation, or a very rapid inability to fight back. Um, or indeed, enough to wound them, even with a little blow, like this, that kind of thing on someone's forearm, bare forearm, or even a clothed forearm, that is enough force, or indeed on their neck or their head, in order to open them up for a bigger blow, should I need to make a bigger blow. So. We don't need to hit someone with a huge amount of force with a sharp sword. Um, we certainly don't need to be going, ah, bam, in order to give them a significant wound. Okay? This will give them a significant wound. Thrusts, that, will give a very significant wound. And in actual fact, if we apply too much force to a thrust, we have a completely different problem of over-penetration. What we don't want is to bury our weapon so deep in the opponent's body that we can't extract it again, okay? Because that leaves us vulnerable, both to potentially them if they're still alive, or indeed one of their partners or whatever. So we don't want to overcut most of the time. We don't want to uh, hit um, in such a way that leaves us exposed, um, and we don't want to overthrust. Um, and relatively light hits with a sharp sword can still do a huge amount of damage to a soft human body. Next point I want to mention is when a person is prone. Um, so if, for example, I'm fencing someone and let's say they strike me at the, he at the head, bam, I knock their sword off to the side, okay, so I've, that's called a rabat incidentally, I've rabatted and now I'm going to hit down onto their forearm, boom. That would be that motion from there with a volta, a turn and a downwards fendente, okay, so defend, volta, bam, down onto the arm, 
That is going to be enough to disable their right sword arm, assuming they're right handed. Um, so that is as much force as I need. If I were batted and then went Whoa, sort of way up here to get a really big blow, I might, indeed, I might chop through both their arms if I make a really big movement, but the amount of time I'm adding into it means that they've got more time to cover themselves and respond. So it would be a bad tactical decision. But in fencing, in modern HEMA, if I defend and then took a huge blow and smashed the person on the arms as hard as I possibly could, what am I achieving? I'm not, in martial terms, really achieving anything. Uh, a simple cut on their forearm would have been enough to disable their arm. And in fencing terms, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm ramping up the, uh, the likelihood that I'm going to really seriously injure a competition opponent or a training partner. For what? I've still only hit them. I've defended myself and hit them. I could have done that in a much more compassionate way and still won the point. Okay, um, And it's not, as I say, it's not more martial behaviour to hit someone harder. Because you don't need to hit someone harder if it was a sharp sword. What this often comes back to, I think, is the fact that we're using blunt, blunt training weapons. And therefore we often forget that these are actually simulating sharp weapons. We're not simulating beating someone to death, incapacitating someone with a relatively light stick. A relatively light and balanced stick, in fact. If I want to hit someone with this, with maximum force, I actually don't hit them with this end. I hit them with that end. I hit them with the heavy end. Okay? This is a specifically designed instrument to actually reduce the impact force at the tip here. Because it's not a bludgeoning weapon. It's not a mace. It's not a poleaxe. It's not um, a flail. It is... A longsword, it's designed to wound by cutting and thrusting. Yes, it has leverage and it has force and it has power to it. Um, you don't want to make a weapon that's incredibly light at the tip and got all the weight at the back because then your cut would be completely ineffective. But with increased authority at the end of the weapon, with like an axe or a falchion or a mess or something like this, also you make something which is difficult to make safer when it's blunt as well. So for that reason, we don't really do axe or mace sparring in general because it's incredibly dangerous because the fact that the weapon's blunt doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. You're still hitting someone with a large, heavy um, object on the end of an accelerating lever. I will also briefly mention the armoured fighting that we see in things like Battle of the Nations. And I, um, I, there's many things I can talk about Battle of the Nations, and I get asked many times to say what my views are on it. And my views are sort of complex, so I'm not going to... This isn't a, a completely all-encompassing view of Battle of the Nations right now. But what I will say is that the idea that full contact armoured fighting is in some way more real uh, than whatever other types of armoured fighting people are doing is kind of rubbish, because... Let's think about this for a second. They're using swords, which are relatively light, sharp and pointed weapons. They're using them as bludgeoning weapons. And as bludgeoning weapons, they're not very good. Because, surprise, surprise, the best bludgeoning weapons are maces, warhammers, axes, poleaxes, things like this. That's what they were designed for. Swords are not designed as bludgeoning weapons. Swords are designed to cut and thrust. That's why in all of the treatises of armoured fighting that we have available to us, swords are used to predominantly thrust, and very occasionally cut, but predominantly to thrust at openings in the armour. Bashing the armour with the edge of the sword is a largely futile activity. Yes, you can hurt someone slightly like that, but you're never going to incapacitate or wound them on a, on a regular basis by hitting an armoured plate with the edge of a sword. And really, the fact that the swords are blunt or sharp, because you're hitting armour, doesn't make any difference. Those swords could be sharpened, and you still wouldn't wound the person, because swords don't cut through armour. Um, so, by and large, applying full force within an armoured context, and then applying, using that full force to hit someone's armour with a sword, makes no sense. It's, it's a complete nonsense. Um, in actual fact, you know, where the full force would apply is actually in the grappling and 
if you um, if you were to apply arm locks and throws and um, choke holes and things like this, then yeah, indeed, if you applied full force with those, they would be effective um, through the armor because they bypass the armor. They offend the person inside the armor rather than trying to break the armor itself. Or indeed, if you applied full force to allowing thrusting uh, in ways that actually would wound people in armor, such as thrusting in armpits and um, pulling their visor open and thrusting them in the face and things like this, yes, that would be effective. That would be my idea of full force. Striking armour with the edge of a sword as hard as you can is not my definition of full force, because actually it's impotent. It doesn't achieve anything. And that's why in things like Battle of the Nations what we see is most of the fights are actually won by kicking, shoving, pushing, trying to make people fall over, pinning them against a barrier and repeatedly hitting them until they just give up or get tired. That's why those swords are so ineffective in that fighting, because they're not being used as swords. They're being used as super light maces. And you know what? Super light maces are very effective, and that's why super light maces weren't uh, really used in armoured fighting. Maces were used in fighting, and sharp swords were used in fighting. Blunt swords used to hit armour, not really a thing. Um, so, to sum up. In essence, I think the, the whole idea of full contact doesn't really make sense in the way that people are applying it to HEMA. Number one, what most of us in HEMA do is bloss vector or unarmoured fighting. We're simulating fighting in civilian clothes, or in some cases even just a shirt, um, hence the name bloss vector. Um, we're simulating that type of fighting with a sharp and pointed sword. With a sharp and pointed sword, you don't need an awful lot of force to wound someone. Equally, a lot of the ways of applying lots of force to wounding someone are bad fencing practice. Next up, if you're in a training situation, either with a partner or in a competition, it's often just unnecessary to hit someone as hard as you physically can when you can hit them slightly less powerfully and still win the point. Um, but also, I would, I would also argue to, to an extent that, that yes, Using force is often important, and I wouldn't say that there aren't times when you do want to hit someone, uh, or, or at least strike, fairly powerfully. And an example, a classic example of this, is something like the Zornhau, um, where, to break it down into its most basic terms, you're trying to gain the centre line, you're trying to dominate the opponent's blade with your strike. So I, mean, I would never say that you shouldn't be striking strongly um, in in HEMA, and sometimes that's to a person's blade, sometimes it's at a person's body. Yes, I understand there are times when you need to do that, but fundamentally what I suppose that I'm saying is that the idea of full force and what actually equates to full force is sort of wrong in HEMA, because if I were trying to injure someone in a HEMA bout, much how I've said how in Battle of the Nations, what they're doing is they're using their full strength to fight someone, but they're using the weapon in a completely ineffectual way. They're using a sword that's blunted to strike at armour. And that is not something that's designed actually to injure someone. So in that sense, they're not using full force. And in the same way, I would argue that in HEMA, we don't use full force, because if full force equated to actually trying to harm my opponent or my partner, then, quite simply, I wouldn't take something like a blunt fetish shirt and try and hit them in the fencing mask really hard. I would aim for somewhere that wasn't protected, and probably I wouldn't just hit them really hard. I'd probably be aiming to grapple them and uh, break their elbow joint, or, um, or, or you know, do, do half-solding that somehow bypasses their protection. We're not using full force because we're trying to hurt each other, that's the point. We might use force, we might use strength in what we do because that's necessary to achieve our goal. We might do a Zornhau with force because we need to dominate the line. But then we, once we've dominated the line and once we're actually hitting the person, we don't need to apply full strength once we've actually gained that opening. And equally, we don't need to break a person's leg or break a person's elbow if we've got to the point where we could. So I guess it all comes down to control for me, and this is the essence of, I think, Bob's article, which again I'll, I'll, I've linked below. Um, I think it ultimately comes down to control, 
and people don't understand what full force actually means. And full force doesn't mean trying to kill or really badly injure your opponent. Full force actually in HEMA really means using as much force as is necessary and relatively safe and reasonably safe to achieve the fencing goal. It doesn't mean trying to beat the living shit out of our opponent using illogical uh, means or illegal means um, just simply to dominate them with force. I hope that makes some kind of sense. Thanks folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and feel free to follow us on Facebook.